I'd like to read a scripture as we open. It's a, a very familiar scripture. Romans chapter 4, verse 6. The word of God says, For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For, scar uh, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps... For a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise God. We serve a God who loves us. And why don't we stand? It's so important to remember the fact that it is nothing that we've done. It's nothing that we've earned. But it's by his grace and his love that he surrendered his life that we have eternity with him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he loves us. So why don't we bow our heads and, and begin with prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, Father, this time to gather in your name. Lord, we thank you, Father, for, for your love, Lord. For we are worthy of nothing, Lord, yet you love us. You loved us so much, Lord, that, Father, you wrapped yourself in flesh and came down and died on a cross to pay the price, Lord, that we could spend eternity with you. And, Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit would move in the midst of your people, that, Father, you would touch those who are here in a mighty way, that you would touch those who are even watching at home in a special way as well. You bring strength to know those who need strength. You bring healing to those who need healing. Father, even tonight we lift up our, our brother Marco's mom to you, Lord. Father, you know the circumstance. You know the situation. We place her in your hands, Lord. We ask that you would bless brother Marco in a special way as he shares the word tonight. You cover him, and, and Father, you use him, Father, by your Holy Spirit. We just wait with a godly excitement for what you have. Father, bless this meeting. We just put this time in your hands. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. 
chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. When I stand in your Your love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness. Justice flows like the ocean's tide. Amen. We thank you, Lord. Tonight we just, Lord, in faith and gratitude, Lord, and in humility, God, in desperation, just cry out to you, Lord, that you are faithful that you are loving, God, that you are holy, Lord, tonight. And we just thank you for allowing us the privilege of just coming into your presence and just honoring you tonight. It's not because of who we are. It's totally 
because of who you are and what you've done for us. And we thank you tonight for accepting us through Jesus. We thank you and we just bless you together and we all pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why don't you hug somebody next to you, wave to somebody else. Let somebody know you're glad they're here tonight. Praise God. The Lord is good. Amen. We thank him for even that beautiful time of worship. How he just calms our spirit and just brings our mind and heart to a place to be ready to receive. And we thank we thank the Lord for that. And uh, as far as announcements go tonight, uh, we have the leaders meeting tomorrow here at uh, 630. So for the leaders, uh, we'll be gathering here tomorrow at 630. Uh, we have our Stay Connected videos at, are on Friday nights at 7 o'clock, so remember to, to be a part with those. Those are, are still uh, basically uh, filling the gap for our Sunday night services, and we hope to, Lord willing, as we continue to go further here, and these uh, restrictions uh, start to open up more and uh, the numbers start to get a little better as they have been in God's grace, uh, we'll be gathering again on Sunday night, so that's not anything that we're putting off or we're thinking about stopping that that that's not going to happen god has placed that in the hearts of uh, of us as leaders and we're going to continue to go forward in the matter that god has showed us for the last 43 44 years now <laughs> and god's going to continue to cover us so praise god um so with that uh if there's any of the young people that uh, are here for wednesday night class they can go ahead and go to their class and i'm going to call brother marco forward at this time Good evening, God's people. What a joy it is to be here this evening, and just what a blessing that we're starting to see uh, more and more of the brethren uh, uh, step out away from their homes and uh, join us uh, in service. So praise God for that. Uh, thank you, and we welcome you. And we also want to greet and, and say hello and welcome our, our brethren that are watching online. So uh, before I begin uh, the word, why don't we just have a quick word of prayer? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, once again, Lord, for just the blessing of this meeting, Lord, of just gathering, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, as, Lord, the word goes forth, Lord Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would just touch, Lord, you would just encourage, and you would just minister, Lord, to each and every heart. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, this meeting is yours. You have your way. Your will be done. In your precious name, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, as I was sitting there thinking, just waiting uh, to be called forward as, as I parked in the back, and uh, even as I um, got ready to leave the house, it was a little cool, so I put on my jacket, and I'm walking from the car to the building, and uh, I feel nice and, and comfortable, and so I'm sitting here, and I'm worshiping, and it's like, you know what, it's getting awfully hot in here. I think the jacket needs to come off. And <laughs> Praise the Lord. But if you were to touch my hands, you'd know. Ice cold hands. Praise the Lord. For those of you that uh, uh, back in the handshaking days, uh, whenever I was asked to share, uh, I would shake hands and uh, the comment would usually be, brother, your hands are so cold. This, you must be sharing tonight. <laughs> so, praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, this doesn't have anything to do with much of anything, but um, how many of you, and I don't need a, a show of hands or anything like that, but how many of you were aware uh, that it was supposed to rain today? Okay, praise God, amen, praise the Lord. And um, I'm not usually one to watch the news, there's really nothing good on it, so why even bother? So most of the time, um, each new morning is a surprise to me, it's like, What's the weather like going to be today? And I was just thinking how uh, yesterday was such a beautiful day. It was like 75, 77 degrees. And um, I had been told by a brother um, a couple of days before that they were expecting rain today. And so yesterday I'm thinking, man, it's hard to believe that uh, it's going to rain. And they were talking about a 20-degree uh, uh, drop in temperature. And it's like, that's crazy. And uh, yesterday, 
who would have thought that today would be like today? And as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, that is also how our peace is. We're, we're having a good day. You know, we have the peace of God. We've, uh, we've gotten up early. We've thanked the Lord. We've, we've done our reading, our devotion. We've sent everybody off to, to work or to school. We've, we've done the things around the house that need to be done. And Lord, thank you for this day. And then like from yesterday to today, bam, it's like, where'd the blue skies go? You know, what happened to the sunshine? I, I can't believe it that in 24 hours the day turned like this. And that's how it is with our peace. We are, we're filled with the peace of God. Things are going good. And then the next thing you know, bam, there it goes. And so that's what I'd like to share on this evening is peace. Uh, I've titled this message, Best Prayer. So imagine with me for a moment that you're a blue collar worker, blue collar office worker, and you're on your way to work and it's Friday morning, it's the last day of the week. So it's the last day of the work week and you can't wait for your work day to end. It's been a hectic week, both at work and at home. You feel frazzled, your nerves are shot, you can hardly wait for the work day to end so that you can go home and try to unwind from such a frantic week. So on your way home, or I'm sorry, on your way to work, you pull into your favorite Starbucks, there's a plug. <laughs> So you pull into your favorite Starbucks just a, a few blocks away from your workplace and you order your favorite drink. Okay, you take a few sips of your coffee, you're enjoying the aroma, you know, the flavor on your tongue, and it's just great. So you're off to a good start after such, such a bad week. So you pull into your, your parking spot at work, you open the car door, you take your coffee cup, and you sit it on top of the roof of your car, okay? So you lean back into the car, you pick up uh, some folders, some papers, some, some other things, and you swing back in the opposite direction, getting ready to uh, step out of the car. So this rocking motion, you leaning in, you leaning out to step out of the car, causes this coffee cup to begin to slide down. And just as you step out, yep, you guessed it, splash. So not only did you just burn yourself with hot liquid, but now your clothes and your body, they're all sticky from this, depending on your, your type of drink. And I don't really know Starbucks uh, drinks, because when people ask me if I like something from Starbucks, and it's like, I, I don't know, because I don't know Starbucks coffee. It's like, ah, just bring me a water. <laughs> I can't go wrong with the ordering of water. You know, uh, two pumps of this and three shots of that and, you know, uh, low-fat milk, non-fat milk and extra uh, uh, whipped cream and all that stuff. It just, I, it, it confuses me. It overwhelms me. It's like, ah! <laughs> I'm not a Starbucks guy. I'm sorry. But for those of you that are, just imagine that your most gooey drink just spilled all over you. So number one, you burned yourself, and now, now you're all sticky from the stuff that, that just uh, fell all over your body. And so it's like, okay, here it is. It's, it's begun. I had such a good morning, and it didn't take long for it to start to turn sour. But no, the day's not over. Maybe it'll pick up. Who knows? So... You go into the building, you're climbing up the stairs to go to the second floor, and as you round the turn in the stairway, you fumble what you're carrying because of the gooey mess. So there goes your, your papers, there goes your folders, you can just see it all fluttering down. Lands on the floor, ground floor, and so people are stepping all over your work. So. 
big sigh, you turn around, you go back downstairs, you try and pick up all the stuff that you can while hopefully avoiding the people that are walking around about you. And so now your, your work is not now only wet, it's also got people's shoe prints on it. Oh, great. So you uh, make it back upstairs, you go to your workstation, and you sit down. You sit all the things in front of you, and you lean forward to turn the power button on your, your computer. And so you do, and you're greeted with a <laughs> and there's this bright flash. And your computer didn't just crash, it died. <laughs> so you're sitting in your chair, you're staring at this black tube, and it's not even uh, 8.30 in the morning. So your chin drops to your chest. You take your hands, you bring them up to the sides of your head, and you just shake your head from side to side. You draw in a deep breath, you let it out, and then you think to yourself, can this day get any worse? And whenever people tell me that, I always tell them, don't say that, because the answer to that question is yes. And you don't want that to be the uh, response to that question. Maybe for a fleeting second you think it, but don't ever utter that out loud. Can this day get any worse? Because you don't want to find out that it can. Now at this point, it would be extremely easy to become frustrated, to become irritated, and to become upset. Amen, God's people? I mean, just picture, that is you. That is your day. You've had a terrible four, four days of work. You had a good start to your morning, and this day is turning no different than the other four. I've got a great prayer for you. You don't need an education at seminary for this one. This is the prayer that can be said when the world has gotten you down and you just feel plain rotten and you feel that you have no strength left to pray. You're in a big hurry. You got to clean up the mess. You got to call IT and have them come over and replace your computer so you can get your work done uh, for the day. And besides that, you're, you're upset at everybody for what's just happened to you. So are you ready for the prayer? Here it is. Help! That's it. If you need me to repeat it, I will, just in case you didn't catch it the first time. Help! That's funny. Sure, we're laughing, sure. But you know what, God's people? There is a lot of truth in that. If that has been your day, if that has been your week, you are at the end of yourself, you don't know what to do, look up and pray the best prayer that you possibly can. Help. Like I said, you don't need an education at seminary to do that. Just be sure that when you say that prayer, you're saying it to the right person. He will understand. He always does. And best of all, he will answer. Praise God. He will answer when things aren't going your way. He will answer when you've had a bad day or something bad happens, or you're a little nervous about something. How do you help yourself to feel better? We want to experience the peace of God, but that's not always an easy thing. Most of, most of us are busy. Whether you're busy at school, whether you're retired, 
whether you're busy at work or anything else in between, it doesn't matter. There's always something to do for each and every one of us. Something needs to be fixed. Someone needs to be taken care of. And sometimes we just want a break. We want some rest. But more than rest, what we're really seeking is peace. Yet peace isn't something that we can easily grab a hold of. Peace is not tangible. It's not something that I can hold, something that I can touch, something that I can see. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. And this evening we're going to be taking a look at what for most of us are very familiar scriptures. So we'll be looking at Galatians chapter 5 and we're going to read verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. None of these nine virtues that we just read are tangible. Yet we're called to make them a tangible reality in our lives so that others can experience the power of Christ through the way that we live our lives. Peace can be very elusive. It's hard to get a hold of. And really, at the end of a long day, uh, when you come home from work, when you come home from school, when you spent from two to three hours on the freeway trying to get home, you're tired, you're frustrated, and all you want to do is to come into your home and find just a few minutes of peace and quiet. Sink into your chair or, or something. Just let your body relax and go, <sighs> doesn't that sound good when we feel that way? Can you picture that in your mind, yourself doing that? Maybe you've done that. And you can relate to what I've just mentioned. But that's easier said than done. Because as soon as you sit down, you haven't even finished your, <sighs> the phone rings. <sighs> the kids won't settle down. Your mind won't turn off when you get into bed. Or if you do have the luxury of having fallen asleep, you wake up in the middle of the night and your thoughts are racing and it's two or three hours before you can qu quiet your mind to the point that you can hopefully drift off to sleep for maybe another couple of hours and that didn't keep you awake all night and as soon as your eyes close and you're about to doze off, the alarm rings and it's like, there we go, start of another day. Peace and quiet can be very elusive. What about when you need to have a difficult conversation with someone? Where's peace? The fear and anxiety of going to a doctor, preparing for surgery or treatment, decisions that need to be made, in all of those situations, and you have plenty more that you can think of, where is your peace? How do we experience peace when our spouse, our parents, our children, our grandchildren, our siblings aren't handling life very well and you're taking on the burden? And you know, uh, ladies, this is more true of you as a woman than it is of the men. And that's, that's just 
the nurturing quality in you. That's just the way God created you. You find sense, accomplishment, and purpose in taking on other people's problems and trying to fix them. You, you feel that you've accomplished something and in somebody's life, and not that you're looking for a pat on the back, but that's just who you are. So for you, this is more true than it is for men. You take on those burdens. You take on those responsibilities. And so many times, the things that you take on are things that really you can do nothing about. But you, you strive and you struggle to help this person to get them through that situation. But really all you've done is just added stress to your life. Praise God. So add to that the world of sin which surrounds us. Of gossip, abuse, senseless killings, drug abuse. It can cause us to feel anxious. Okay. Enough with the bad news. Are we ready for some good news? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, let's set the stage. The Passover dinner is over. Judas has left. Jesus told him, what you're about to do, go and do quickly. So Jesus rises, or not Jesus, I'm sorry. Judas rises, and he leaves the upper room. So Judas is gone. Jesus is about to be betrayed and arrested, beaten, humiliated, and hung on a cross. But Jesus looks at his disciples and he makes this astounding statement. Let's turn to John chapter 14. Again, familiar scriptures. And we will read verse 27. So Jesus looks at his disciples and he makes this statement. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Aren't those great words from Jesus? Notice Jesus is really clear about where peace comes from. It comes from him. Amen. From a relationship with Christ. We have peace from the creator and the savior of the world. That's good news, God's people. Let's turn to John 16, 33. Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The disciples, they knew tribulation. Tribulation means pressing together or pressure. You know what that's like when you feel pressure, when you feel the world is pressing in on you. It's like you're in a vice and the handle is turning and turning and bringing those jaws closer and closer together and you feel that the life you have is being squeezed out of you. And I think that all of us, we can kind of relate to that, having that pressure come against us. But Jesus tells us the great news. I have overcome the world. My peace is real. I will be there for you. So, we need to experience God's peace. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4.
And we're going to read verses 5 through 7. Again, these are all familiar scriptures. Philippians 4, verses 5 through 7. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Notice the two areas of peaceful pr protection that we can expect from our Heavenly Father. Our hearts and our minds. God is going to guard those two parts of us. 18 inches apart, and those two parts of us, our hearts and our minds, they conspire against us. If our heart is troubled, it won't be long before our, our mind is in turmoil. If our thoughts are headed in the wrong direction, it isn't very long before our heart follows after our mind, our thoughts. But God's peace, the assurance of his control, can guard both heart and mind, no matter what we are facing. Right now, there are Christians that are going through unbelievable things with God's peace. Their assurance in the face of evil and pain is a testimony that brings glory to God. For it is clear to those that are watching that something which surpasses all understanding is going on. They see it. They don't understand it. But the believer knows. It's not him. He's not doing anything. It's God that's keeping him. It's God that's helping him. It's God that's encouraging him. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that each and every one of you has testimonies that you can share about such situations. All to God's glory. These Christians and you and I in those types of circumstances, we're getting supernatural help. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are in the furnace, but they're still walking around. Almost 700 years ago, when Paul wrote these encouraging words to the Philippians, Daniel's friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were living out this passage in the face of great opposition. They were rejoicing in the Lord always, letting their reasonableness be made known to everyone, recognizing the Lord was at hand, and experiencing a peace that far surpassed King Nebuchadnezzar's understanding. That is, until Nebuchadnezzar saw God show up. And where did he see him? He saw him in the furnace. He saw him in the fire. He couldn't understand what was going on with these men. And it's like, didn't we just stoke this furnace? I believe it's seven times hotter than is normal. The men that were stoking the fire, the furnace got so hot that they got consumed. So when the furnace is hot and ready, they toss these three young Jewish men into the furnace. And he's looking. And he says, hey, didn't we toss three men into the fire? And they said, yes, my king. And then he, he was astounded. He says, so then how is it that I see four men and one of them is like God? He knew enough to know <laughs> what he was talking about. That fourth person in the furnace was God. He kept them from the flame. And you know what, God's people? That God 
from the Old Testament. At that time, with those three men, it is the same God today with us in our time through our situation. We, we, we say the scripture, we hear it all the time. God is the same. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. If God helped those three men in their day, that same God is helping us today in our time. Sometimes I think that as we read the Old Testament and, and just the rich history and what it has to, to say, we, it's like uh, the switch hasn't clicked. It's like the light hasn't gone on. And, and I, don't mean, I don't mean to offend anyone or, or, or put anybody down. But if we stop and think about the miracles that we read about in the Bible, that was God working then. It's the same God that's working now. So what he did back then for them, he will do today for us. And we hear this a lot too, is that, that we limit God. We put God in a box. And we, we praise him for the things that he's done. And even Pastor Mike shared this recently. He says, yeah, God, th thank you for what you did last year. But that was nothing compared to now. I'm, I'm sure that this problem is way too much for you to handle. And, and we limit God. We don't allow the fullness of God to have free reign in our, in our lives. And because of that, we struggle. We do. It's, it's like uh, a message that was shared about uh, a man that's drowning and uh, the Holy Spirit, the helper. So when there's a man in the water, you know, the natural instinct is to jump in after him. But that's the wrong thing to do because he'll take you down. He'll push you under the water so that he can be elevated. So in you trying to save him, uh, many times the rescuer ends up the one losing his life. And the person that was going in to get rescued ends up surviving at your cost. So what they say is let the person splash around until he has no more fight. Then you toss him the lifesaver. So he clings to that, exhausted. But you know what? He's yours. You bring him into the boat, you put him in, and he's safe. But you need to wait until he's exhausted all of his energy, all of his strength. Then it's safe for you as a rescuer to go in and get him. And I feel that many times we do the same thing to God. Instead of letting God throw out the life preserver so that we can cling to it and have us come to him, we're thrashing, we're splashing, we're trying to figure out our own way out of the situation. And God says, okay. So he says, God, I'm drowning. Yeah, I know, but you won't let me help you. God, give me your hand. I, I will as soon as you settle down. And when we do settle down, then he comes in. And he picks us up, the helper, the Holy Spirit, praise God. So these Jewish young men that were standing near this roaring furnace, they knew that they were about to be fed to the flames. They weren't sure that they weren't going to die. Their peace came from knowing that no matter what happened, God was going to deliver them. Even they said to the king, they said, King, our God is able to rescue us. They had that confidence, that belief. But they said, but even if he doesn't rescue us in the physical sense, that they wouldn't be tossed into the fire and lose their lives. But even if he chooses not to, and he allows us to be thrown into the fire, we will not bow down to you. And we will praise him because they knew, well, I praise him now in the physical. And if he tosses us in and he, God decides that he's not going to preserve us, then we're in his presence. How, how, how can, it's a win-win situation. I mean, I can't lose either way. Praise the Lord. So no doubt you long for that calm confidence in your heart 
like these three men. But do you believe that no matter what you're going through, God is in control and he's working out all things for your good? Isn't there a scripture that says that? I'm pretty sure that there is. Romans chapter 8, right? We hear that often. Peace is easy to understand when things are going well. But it's not so easy when circumstances are hard. God's peace is always available, and he wants you to rest in it, especially in seasons of darkness and difficulty. The peace that surpasses all understanding is one of the best give, gifts that God has to give. I want that gift. I desire that gift. Each and every day, God's peace. Remember, you do not get to choose your furnace. But you can choose to live rejoicing in the Lord. You can choose to get along with others and practice anxiety-free days as you turn everything over to God with thanksgiving. Even if you don't fully understand how to go through the challenges with a calm, quiet confidence, this will not prohibit God from giving you the gift of peace. And that peace is a powerful way to draw others to the God who has graciously given that to you. So I've talked a little bit about experiencing God's peace. Now, grace to get you through. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the Bible says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Think back to a time when you were in a difficult place. Uh, maybe you're going through a difficult time right now. You were, were you surprised by the peace and comfort that was yours in Jesus? Yes. You're surprised at how you're going through the situation. And then at the end of the situation, you realize, you know what, Lord, that, that wasn't me at all. That was you in me, helping me through my circumstance. When people around you were going under, you say that by some miracle, God kept you together. I know where your strength came from, God's people. God and his grace. God's favor for his own. Grace is what God gives us to get us through. Doctors give prescriptions so that we can get better. Our employers give paychecks so that we can meet our obligations. Teachers give lessons so that we can get smart. And God gives grace to get us through. If you don't have grace, you're not going to make it. Slide, please. The New Testament has much to say about grace. Slide. Ephesians 2, 8 says that we're saved by grace. Slide. Titus 2.11 says that saving grace has appeared to all. Slide. Grace, God's grace is enough for us, says 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Slide. 2 Corinthians 6 1 says that we shouldn't even try to live apart from the grace, the, the grace that he's given us. Slide. Hebrews 12 15 warns that if we fall short of the grace of God, if, as though we go through a hard time, we don't draw down upon the grace of God, then bitterness will surface and defile us. Slide. 
in 1 Corinthians 16.23, as well as many other New Testament closing passages, gives a final blast of encouragement by reminding us about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that is with us all. Thank you. No doubt about it. There is a sustaining, nourishing, feeding, get you through the thing that you're going through, grace, that God gives to every person here. You flat out cannot live your life without God's grace. If you're trying to get along on your own, you've got a big problem on your hands. Without God's grace, we can't be saved. Without his grace, we can't grow. Without his grace, we won't be sustained through the trials of life. Do you have that grace? The grace of God is the source and storehouse of all that we need, not only to get through life, but also to prosper in an ever-increasing, fruitful, faithful walk with, with Jesus. God's supply is unlimited and available upon request. All you have to do is ask. And just remember, God's people, the best prayer, when your day, when situations and circumstances in your life cause you to drop your chin to your chest, to take your hands and put them on either side of your head, and you find yourself shaking your head from side to side, remember the best prayer. Help. Pastor Mike. Praise God. Thank you so much for that, Brother Marco. That beautiful word of, of peace and grace ministers in a special way because, as you shared, we go through so much. We need God's grace on a continual basis. We need his peace, and he provides those for us. That's how good our God is, even as Brother Marco shared those scriptures that he, by his peace, gives us the grace. And we're so thankful that we can run to him. Sometimes in the, in the eye of the storm, we get so overwhelmed by the things that are going on around about us. We see the, it, it, it's, it's, it's a cliche almost to talk about standing in the eye of the storm. But they talk about the winds and the damage that a, a tornado can do, but they say in the very center of that tornado is a complete calm because the winds that are circulating around it don't affect the very center. And we, as believers, we have that peace and that grace. But when we see so much, I picture a twister with cows going by and houses going, we see all those things and it causes us to start to get overwhelmed and we forget the ground that we stand on is holy ground and we stand on, on the rock that is Jesus Christ. And I thank my brother Marco so much for, for sharing that word. I'm going to call the musicians forward. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time. Um, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that, that my brother stepped out tonight. I, I, I know that this wasn't an easy day for him to come. He He's going through quite a bit, even as he's concerned for his mother. And, and I believe even as we open the altar, we can again pray in that circumstance because it would have been very easy to be able to step away and say that these things have overwhelmed my heart and, 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 I, and, I, and I need to, to be away. But... God had placed this word in his heart so that he could give this word that God gave him to us. See, see the value in that. 
and even in the grace and the peace that God gave our brother to share this word. And I thank you so much for stepping out like that. And I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads, and we're going to pray, and then we're going to open the altar. But let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word of peace. Father, your word of grace, these things that you provide to us as your children, Lord. Father, we're worthy of nothing, but Father, you provide these beautiful gifts to strengthen us and guide us. We pray right now, Lord, for our brother Marco, Lord. Father, you bless him in a special way, Lord Jesus. Even as he stepped out to, to be used to share your word even tonight, Lord, you bless him in a special way. We, we lift up again his mother to you, Lord, and we know that she's in a very dangerous situation right now, Lord. But Father, we know that you are above all these things. We completely and fully place her in your hands, asking for your beautiful will to be done. Continue to be and strengthen the Cervantes family. And Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for seeing it, Father, even lived out before our eyes, Lord, this peace and this grace. And you bless even our time of altar call. Father, you bless those who need a touch from you. You draw them close. And, Father, even bring them to this altar. Father, you touch those who are at home, Father, in the same way. Lord. You strengthen them and be with them. We just give you thanks and praise, Lord. We ask you to move again by your Holy Spirit, even through this time of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If anyone needs prayer tonight, you come. You come. The, the leaders will pray with you. Praise God. If not, we can worship God where we stand.
Lord, we thank you for this time, Lord, tonight, this word about peace, Lord. It's challenging, Lord. It's encouraging. God, we just pray, Lord, that we would every day just make our best prayer to you, Lord. Please help, Lord. And we thank you tonight for this time together. We pray you bless Brother Marco, strengthen him and his family, Lord, to help them through this time. And may you bless all the brethren that came tonight, everybody that joined tonight, Lord. And we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He is sweet, I know. He is sweet, I know. Stormy clouds may come, but stormy winds may blow. But I'll tell the world wherever I go. Oh, I found a safe. God bless you and go in God's peace tonight. Thank you. We'll see you uh, Saturday prayer and Sunday. Good night.